So I've been doing a lot of courses and tutorials lately for modeling and animating in Blender. But I still need to practice by myself to get good. What better way to do so than by joining a game jam? Making a game in a very limited time makes it easy to start a project and have a deadline to make sure you submit something, no matter what it is. Plus, I don't have to worry too much about creativity since there is already a theme. This way I can focus more on my goal I want to practice. The goal here will be to get better at modeling and animation in Blender. This also means that I'll be using the animator in Unity. This is what handles transitions between animations using variables and triggers, which I also want to practice more. Let's get right into it. The April Fool's Day Jam sounds good to me. 10 days to make a playable game with a few prizes to win. The theme will be time and the challenge is to prank the player in, in any way. Yeah, that's my kind of jam. I started off the game jam by brainstorming to get a general idea of where I was going. I wrote down a list of April Fool's ideas until I realized something. The player doesn't prank in the game. He's the one being pranked this will be a challenge. So I restarted my brainstorm, but kept the ideas around the theme time. Slowing down time... Controlling time... Time limit... Reaching a checkpoint in time... These are pretty basic ways to incorporate time in a game, and we'll get back to it later anyways. I had a few ideas for the game like going in a loop where you enter a room, but it brings you back to the same room, kind of like the Stanley Parable. I also got inspired by a recent YouTube video by Mark Robert, where he recreated a famous Looney Tunes scene with the Roadrunner to see if a self-driving Tesla will detect a fake road and stop or drive through it. These ideas will make good pranks, but I ended up with the perfect idea to prank the player. An unbeatable boss. Creating a small scene and a few models will keep the project doable in time, and I'll be able to focus on my main goal to get better at animations. So what comes to your mind when you think of April Fools? To me it's either the scene in The Simpsons where Bart shakes a can of Duff beer so much it explodes when Homer opens it, April or getting fish stuck to my back. That one might depend on where you're from, but here in Canada, there's a prank about sticking paper fish on people's back. It's harmless and kids love it. So I decided to make my game around the pond and use fish for some of the models to give that April's full vibe. This will act as the tutorial of the game. You walk around and catch fish with your fishing net. But I'm getting too far ahead now. I haven't done any of this yet. The next day I made a quick game design document to go deeper with my idea and wrote down a timeline of the things I'll have to do in the following days. A fisherman would be perfect as the main character of the game. I can already see myself struggling with the model in Blender, but hey, this is what I signed up for. Every time you catch a fish, time is added to the timer. After a few fish that you catch, a big fish jumps out and attacks you. This is the unbeatable boss. I went on Pinterest to grab a few references for the models. This is where I get to choose what kind of style the game will have. Now I can finally load up Blender and start modeling. I started with the fisherman and oh boy did I get a reality check here. Starting with the main character was a terrible idea. I tried to use the blocking method at first and then joined all the mesh together to sculpt some details. Nope. It's always so easy when you follow a tutorial, but it's a different story when I'm on my own. More practice is definitely needed for this, so I'll just make a simple low poly character for now. One thing I don't do enough is rely on references. I feel like I'm cheating when I use them. I'm not sure why I think that, but I need to get this off my head because it's almost impossible to do without references, especially for beginners like me. Up next is the small fish model that will be flying around the scene. This was quite simple. And the fun part with them is yet to come, when we'll be animating them and making them jump around like real fish out of the water. So what kind of unbeatable boss can we use in a scene around the pond? It could be a sea monster or a huge octopus. But I want to stick with a simple model to make sure I don't discourage myself like I did with the fisherman. So I chose a puffer fish. They look funny and dangerous at the same time. With the puffer fish I'll be able to make them roll around the pond trying to catch you. So we already have an animation in mind. Making the spikes on his body wasn't too hard, but the face was something else. I might have picked a difficult reference to use, because my puffer fish looked more like some kind of alien bear. I UV unwrapped all of my models to make sure the textures stick to them nicely. UV unwrapping is one of the most intimidating parts of making models when you start. But now it feels like Christmas when I'm doing it. Okay, so my main models are done. Let's get into the fun part, animating them. But before that, we need to create the bones to be able to move them. 
This has to be done right, otherwise the model won't bend correctly. You'll see what I mean soon enough. Now that the armature of our main character is done, we can start with the most important animation, the locomotion. This way, once we start the Unity project, we can already load up the walking animation of the fisherman. So with a walking cycle reference, we work our way by adding keyframes and moving around the bones. But what is this? The hand is curling straight out of a horror movie. Oh, take my hand! Ah! Come on! <laughs> Remember when I told you how important bone placement is? Well, I thought this was my problem at first, but it was actually something way different. I spent an hour trying to find out what it is, and to my surprise, ChatGPT found the problem on the first try. Good boy, Baba. I had a whole bunch of armature in my modifiers that I had to delete. I imported all of this in Unity and told my savior to make me a script for the player movements. After a few modifications, I had a moving character. I gave a small paint job to our fisherman and substance painter and added it to a material in Unity. The fisherman needs a fishing net to catch his fish. So we model it and add a cloth component in Unity to give it a real feeling of a fishing net floating around. I attach the fishing net to the hand bone with a parent component and voila! We have our weapon moving along with the main character's animation. Talking about animations, it's time to make our small fish jump out of the pond. I made them a small armature along with a simple wobble animation and the rest will be done by script. On the next day, I took it a step further into the animator and used the blend tree for the locomotion of our character. It's my first time using it in Unity and it works well. After a few adjustments, the idol animation is looping when the character is not moving, the animation blends into walking when there's movement, and he runs when I hold shift. But you see, my attack and locomotion animations had a problem. They can't play at the same time, unless we have an avatar mask. This is actually very cool. You pick the bones that you want to move when an animation is triggered, and only these bones will move with the new animation. The rest of the body will keep doing the other animation. Now, time to work on the big boss. I want him to jump out of the pond like the small fish, then roll around. To make the puffer fish roll, I used a spline to follow. Then I made a simple rolling animation to add to a spline animator. Simple, but gets the job done. A small paint job to the fish and we're good to go. It got a bit more complicated when the puffer fish had to go from the jump off spline to the roll around spline and start the animation. It needed a lot of tweaking to make it work. The basic idea of the puffer fish jumping out of the pond was to look like the boss intro animation of the Zelda games, where the camera does a close up to the boss. So I gave it a try and added a second camera that will activate once the fish jumps out. Only 24 hours left. We need to fix this janky attack animation to make it look less like trash. Alright, it still looks like trash. But fancy restaurant trash, I guess. Let's add a bit of challenge to the game with a stamina bar for our character. It'll go down when he's running or attacking. This is basic UI stuff. I swear, I didn't look it up on YouTube. Now we want to do the same thing with an HP bar for the fisherman and one for our unbeatable boss that will refill once it's depleted. This time I gave it a shot by myself since it was fresh in my memory. Working with hitboxes on the boss and the character was a real pain. Collision always seems to be like a hit or miss. This is when using ChatGPT got messed up. It seems like I don't learn from my mistake. ChatGPT was a good tool to create the basic scripts at the beginning of the project, but now things got more complex and it seems like this is way too complicated. It took a few tweaks to get it to work, and it wasn't the most impressive work, but we have a boss battle. Now let's add some sound to the game. I need a small splash sound for the fish jumping out of the water, a chill music loop until the bus jumps out and then heavy metal starts playing. I also added a sound for the bus animation. I inverted the burp and made it low pitch. I thought it was quite funny, but my stomach thought otherwise. To add more visuals, I made a particle effect for when the fish jumps out of the pond. Only a few hours left before I have to submit the game. Time to do some polishing. I added health points that appear above the fish when you catch them. Remember when I said at the beginning of the video we were going to talk about the theme time? Well, I also forgot about it. There was nothing about the time in the game and I only had a few hours left. So instead of having an HP bar for my character, it will be a time bar that goes down gradually. And each time you catch a fish, you get more time added. Well, this was a last minute save. Now I made sure that everything works okay and the game is ready to be submitted. The build was done when there was only 20 minutes left until the game jam is over. What a thrill! Over the next few days, I received a few comments about my game and I think the prank worked pretty well. I wish I had more times to add some assets around the scene to make it more alive 
but my main goal was to practice my models and animations, which is what I did. Overall, I'm quite happy with my progress. Joining this game jam was definitely worth it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment to like and subscribe if you did. I'll be doing more content like this. I'll see you at the next game jam. See ya.